Hi, my name is Brendan with Prairie Sun Solar. I'm gonna walk you guys just through a typical ground mount array that you're gonna see on most farms, if it's a business, just your standard ground mount array with piles in the ground. This is gonna be a ground mount solar array. It's gonna consist of 20 solar panels. Each panel is about 500 watts. So you're getting about 10 kilowatts here. So five times 20 or about 10 kilowatts. We also have an 11.4 kilowatt inverter. So that inverter is gonna be AC power and you have 10 on the DC side, it's gonna allow this system to expand. So you can kind of see on the far end, we didn't actually cut the rails on that end because they are planning to add them in the future, a few more panels. With this array, you're gonna have your racking component, you're gonna have your screw piles for your mounting to the ground, you're gonna have your inverters, and then with this system, we also have power optimizers just to make the panels produce independently, and we're gonna have a full data set on those panels to be able to record and monitor and then you have your actual panels which go on last. And so we'll walk you through that. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on how we typically install this DIY ground mount system. So the first thing you're gonna install is gonna be your piles. We're gonna do a pile layout. We're gonna pre-plan it so you know exactly what the spacing is from front to back, as well as side to side. The first part after you've put your screw piles in the ground is you're gonna put these uprights in place. They're pre-assembled. And so all you're doing is unfolding them and you're getting them level and then you're gonna torque the nuts on them. And so once you have the uprights in place, which is gonna be this major part, and you're gonna do that on every single screw pile. This one has four uprights. You're then gonna be putting on the horizontal cross beams. And so the horizontal cross beam is gonna be here and we're gonna attach that to the upright and just level out the array. Once we have the beams all installed, the next thing is gonna be your electrical. So you're gonna be installing your optimizers where every single panel is gonna run just underneath each panel. Once you've done that, you're gonna run the cables back to a little junction box so they're pre-ready to be wired into the inverter. And then the next thing we're gonna do is basically just install the panels. And the panels go on quite simply. They have these uh, mid end clamps. They're gonna go right into the rail and they just match up with the panel. It's a super slick system. And so the ends are gonna be on the side and then you're gonna have mid clamps, which go between the middle of each panel. And you're just gonna move along the array panel after panel and build up and over. Within a solar panel system, most people are generally focused just on your panels. What we wanna get you to focus on a little bit more is your inverters. It, in my opinion, it's the most important part of the system, it's the heart of the system, and it's your most likely point of failure within a system. Um, there's three different types or styles that you're gonna see in the industry. Uh, there's going to be a string inverter, there's going to be a string inverter with power optimizer, which is the solar edge system, and then there's micro inverters. String inverters are quite typical actually on ground mounts. Um, most of the time, the reason that we've kind of shifted away from string inverters is because they don't give you independent panel production. So if one panel has a little bit of shade on it, then the rest of the panels are gonna act as good as the weakest panel. It's kind of like your old Christmas lights, like if one goes down, they're all down. So by going with say a solar edge system, which has the main string inverter and the power optimizers, which are installed on every single panel, they basically give you that panel independence. So if one panel shaded, all the rest are still gonna operate at 100%, even if that one's say at 0%. Uh, the last option is the micro inverter system which is basically instead of having one large inverter, you're gonna have a micro inverter under each panel. Uh, there is advantages to both systems, whether you're going say solar edge or the micro inverter system. Uh, the micro inverters, they give you that independent panel production. If one micro inverter goes down, the rest of the system's still gonna work. Uh, the one reason that we do stray away from micro inverters is because they actually take the panel system, which produces DC electricity, changes it to AC right at the array. And if you're on a roof mount system, it makes it a little bit more difficult to add batteries, EV chargers down the road, because you've already changed that energy from DC to AC. Now, if you want to store power, batteries are DC powered, so you need to put DC power into them. If you've already changed it to AC power, then you're going to basically be having to convert it three times instead of just once when you use it. So. One of the, the main reasons that we really like the solar edge system is the optimizers keep the power DC going through the array, goes to the inverter, and then you change it to AC. So if you wanna add a battery down the road, if you wanna add an EV charger down the road, um, you're able to do that and not pay a triple conversion penalty on energy. So again, this solar array is 20 panels. 
they're gonna ask how is it wired? So we have what are called strings on it. There's two strings and a string is basically how many panels are connected in a row. So with this system being 20 panels, we did two even strings at 10. So you got the whole bottom row strung to each other through the optimizers and they're gonna basically come back into this junction box. So we're gonna have four cables in here. You got a positive and a negative for string one and then you get a positive and a negative for string two. Those are then gonna carry through this cable into your inverter where you have spots for positive one and negative one for the first string and you got positive one and negative one, negative two for the second string. So basically we're just gonna show you that, you know, your panels, 10 of them connected in a row, tying into the inverter in the first string, the next 10 connected in a row, tying into the second string. And that's just gonna be how it's wired. Yeah, so overall the advantages of installing a solar system on your farm, you're gonna save on your monthly power bill you're gonna increase your property value by having a solar asset that is gonna basically re remove your power bill. Uh, you have the capital cost allowance, so you can write off 75% of the system in a single year. You have a 30% refundable investments tax credit as long as you're incorporated business. Um, and just year over year, like if you're paying 500 bucks a, a month over the year, you can reduce that down to your fixed connection fee, which in Saskatchewan is just $45. So you go from a $500 bill down to 45 bucks and that's at today's rates. On average we're going up about 5% per year over the last 10 years. So your $500 bill now, add 5% each year and see where that gets you in 10, 15, 20 years. And so you're going to be saving even on that cost difference too. So it's a huge advantage to install solar on your farm. Yeah and if you have any questions or you know you want to know what it costs, how it works, feel free to reach out, leave a comment below. We're here to provide the education around it. We want you to know how it works, what the system costs, what the paybacks are. Um, any information that you need, we're here to provide you. We wanna make sure that you're making a sound decision and it's, it's gonna be beneficial for years for you.